Thanks for joining us today here at Holes Performance and Machine. Uh, we haven't done a video yet on uh, camshaft timing uh, and degree in the camshaft in, so I want to take the time to uh, go over some of that with you guys today. Uh, right here we got a uh, big block Chevy. This is 582 cubic inches. It's made a little bit different than your conventional 582, which is uh, 4.375 by 4600. This one's a little unique. This one's uh, 4350 by 4.625, and that's how we're achieving around that 582, 583 inches here with this. Um, it's in a 9.8 deck. Um, we feel that uh, going with this style design, uh, less pumping losses, less friction against the wall, uh, less rod angularity in this thing. So anyway, moving on to uh, camshaft with this. This particular camshaft has a uh, 116 uh, lobe separation here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, and we degreed it into a 115 intake center line, of which means uh, the, the exhaust side uh, becomes 117 as far as its intake, its uh, exhaust center line here. So, um, you know, customers ask all the time, should I uh, degree a camshaft in? Should I just put it in with the two dots lined up? Never a good idea just to make an assumption that uh, everything is accurately placed. And what I mean by everything being accurately placed, I'm talking about the keyway in the crankshaft. I'm talking about the pin in the camshaft and lots of other variables that the that can that need to be taken into consideration, which would throw off your cam timing. So yes, it's extremely important to degree a camshaft in extremely. Um, if you want the best performance out of it, assuming that your uh, guidance or you're hooked up with somebody that is knowledgeable enough to uh, choose or to plot out the intake and exhaust lobes uh, accordingly for the size of your pump, meaning the cubic inches, the static compression ratio at hand, the fuel type you're using, and uh, that in itself will yield you the correct cylinder pressure if the intake profile is correct. And the exhaust profile we'll talk about uh, on a different time because uh, it gets uh, very elaborate, intricate as far as uh, camshaft design, but we'll save that for another video. Okay. So we do the intake centerline lobe method as far as degree in a camshaft in. And uh, what's most important is you get your absolute top dead center. And that means you're going to need to set up with indicators, as you see, have one right here, uh, which allows us to establish uh, the complete top dead center when that piston is exactly at the top. So we wanna make sure that when we're installing our degree wheel, that we establish top dead center. And that's important. It's not just there's there's a varying degree of about three degrees of dwell, which means the crankshaft will move three, possibly four degrees without the piston actually moving. And that's the rod sweeping back and forth while the piston still stays at the top. So we want to get the absolute uh, center of that. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll drop the piston down and it's way down right now, but I'll, I'll bring it up to give you an understanding here. Let's see if we can get it back up here. Okay. All right. And what you want to do is kind of favor that piston a certain way you want to descend it once you find your top dead center where the sweep of the needle doesn't move anymore you want to drop it down to 90 thou reference your degree wheel okay and then sweep it back over till it comes back to zero again and drops back down to 90. you could take the two readings split the difference, and establish the absolute top dead center. So this is an important step, and many miss this step. If you don't get this step right, the remainder of the steps won't follow accurately. So this is extremely important to get the perfect top dead center. Once you've established the perfect top dead center here, 
and you've relocated your degree wheel onto TDC, you're ready to go. You're ready to degree the cam in. You want a dial indicator on your intake lifter. This happens to be a mechanical roller. So as you could see, if I move this in closer, okay, we're right there with the dial indicator. Okay. You want to find the top, you want to find the absolute top, which is your maximum lobe lift, which we're coming to right now, where it doesn't move anymore. You want to zero out your dial indicator. You're going to reverse the crank in the opposite direction, dropping back down to 90 thousandths, 10th out prior. Read your degree wheel. Make a notation of it. Come back, pop dead center as you're turning the crank now clockwise. Come back to zero and drop back down to 90. Get your reading once again. Write your findings down. The way to do this intake center line method is you take your two findings, just as we've shown how it's done. Came in at 92.25, the first finding, 126.25 on the second. We come up with 218.50 divided by 2, which is 109. What we're doing here is we're finding no different than the piston where we found the absolute top dead center. We're finding the absolute top dead center of that intake lobe, which is your intake center line. We come up with 109.25. Prior to this whole process, you need to have a target figure of what you're going to try and achieve. And in this, the lobe separation angle is 116. We're looking to achieve 115 for the intake center line, which means we're going to set this camshaft one degree advanced. All right. Now, we missed our mark here with our first setting. So we're going to move the camshaft, and in this particular application, this is somewhat simple because this is a Jessel belt setup on a big block Chevy. And we have some degree marks here and a line. So simply by loosening these up, we're going to move this. And we went ahead and we did this about three times to try and dial this in, and we did. So the second shot at it. After we moved the camshaft timing, we come in with 97 and 131 on the degree wheel, added the 2, divided by 2, 114. We're getting close. Moved it a little more, came up with 98, 132, 230, divided by 2, 115. Now, if you were to just put it on zero and throw the cam in, we would have came up 109. So we had to move it. Okay, so basically what these are is just a reference. It's not accurate, meaning if the line, if you have it on two degrees advanced, it doesn't mean your camshaft is two degrees advanced. You have to go through the process of degreeing a camshaft in because there's lots of different uh, variables here where the keyway is located, sometimes how the timing chain manufacturer makes their set, where the pin is located in the cam. Lots of different variables. We do a lot of camshaft design here. We have our own company. It's called Strange Magic Camshaft Technologies. Um, we have contractual agreements with uh, three of the top grinding facilities in the country. We do plot the lobes out. We plot the intake lobes out. We plot the exhaust lobes out. We do all the plotting work uh, for our customers. And uh, so it's really the brains behind how well your camshaft is going to perform in your engine. Uh, it's not necessarily the one who's grinding. 
So you got to you got to hook up with someone, you want to hook up with someone that knows engine design. And it's really important. It will make a world of a difference because what's really important in this is not only your exhaust lobe events for scavenging, your intake lobe events, which provide your cylinder pressure. If your cylinder pressure is off, your motor is not going to perform well. So it's an intricate science here to uh, engine design and development. Anyway, thanks for tuning in with us. You could reach us at 1-800-382-1320. And uh, if you're interested in a camshaft or you need some technical assistance uh, with load plotting or uh, you know anything for that matter, uh, engine design, just give us a call. It's 1-800-382-1320. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Ols Performance and Machine. Like and share. Uh, tell your friends about our company. Thank you.